The Cardinals win a series. David Free says, thanks, but no thanks. Plus, a minor league Monday today on this episode of Locked on Cardinal. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast, and more. You can also go to YouTube and find us there. Like, subscribe, comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. All right, so first and foremost, happy Father's Day from Sunday, uh, in case you guys didn't see us post that, and uh, happy Juneteenth today on this uh, June the 19th, and this is a better Monday than uh, we've been used to recently, (laughs) and that's because the Cardinals picked up a couple of wins over the weekend and actually won a series by taking two of three in New York over the $345 million mess that is the New York Mets right now, and in normal Cardinal fashion, Nothing was easy for the guys this weekend. Uh, It's not like they walked into New York and just blew them out or something like that. No, 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 no. (laughs) It it was a struggle in all three games. They didn't get off to a very good start on Friday night when arguably your top pitcher, Miles Michaelis, got knocked around early on, falling behind three to nothing, which then swelled to five to nothing. And then by the end of the third, uh, the game was pretty much over, right? Uh, The Cardinals had very little life again on the field, getting just one run on five hits offensively. Although it was nice to see Wilson Contreras wake up a little bit on Friday night. Two-hit game. He also popped a dinger in that one, but they end up losing that game by the score of uh, 6-1. to So uh, nothing great. Nothing great at all on Friday. Uh, First inning continues to be a problem for Michaelis. He has now allowed a team-high 13 runs in the first inning in his 15 starts this season. ERA is at 7.80 in the first inning. What's going on there? What is that? He's allowed 27 hits in the first inning, including four on Friday night. Not exactly ideal for a team that has self-esteem issues. You know, they they get behind early and they kind of crumble. And that's not really good for a team that's that's fragile the way they are right now. Um, I, I don't have an explanation as to what Michaelis is doing differently in the first inning than what he's doing the rest of the game. I, I, I can't explain it. That's something that Dusty Blake and the uh, rest of the pitching strategists over there with St. Louis uh, need to figure out, but it's something that needs to be remedied kind of quick because you can't just keep falling behind early in games like that. Saturday, you get Adam Wainwright on the mound and one pitch in, he's down one to nothing. Uh, Brandon Nimmo hits a home run and we're all thinking it, right? Everybody's thinking the same thing I did. Here we go again. Here we go again. One pitch into the game, and boom, you're already losing. But this time around, the offense responds. They punch back, like Ali said in that uh, press conference following the Giants' debacle on Wednesday. They actually punch back. They get three in the second, headlined by uh, Paul Goldschmidt's two-run oppo shot. Jordan Walker hits an oppo taco as well, which you love to see. I'm loving everything I'm seeing out of Jordan Walker right now at home plate when he's batting uh Wainwright settles in nicely over the next few innings he does end up giving up a two-run jack in the fifth to make it four to three but the bullpen combo of Andre Palante and Giovanni Gallegos although it got a little shaky let's be honest you you know there was traffic on the bases when they were out there but they end up throwing up zeros in the end they throw up zeros after Wayno exited and then Hicks comes in and he has a dominant ninth inning on Saturday, picking up his first save since 2019. I would not have guessed that, that no saves, none, have been since 2019. Not even just randomly over the last couple of years. Remember, he didn't pitch in the COVID year, so he missed the whole season. But uh, odd that never, never, not one. So good to see that. And the Cards ended up snapping their six-game losing streak. Wayno grabs career win number 198. So all in all on Saturday, 
n- nothing really to complain about. It was it wasn't so bad. I mean, you don't want to fall behind early like that, but uh, they respond just fine. Everything everything looked good on Saturday. Then you get to yesterday's game on Father's Day, and it was. You remember the old in in the playground and the you you had at school the teeter totter. <laughs> you remember that thing up down up down. That's what was going on on Sunday. It was a teeter-totter of the game. The Cardinals get a two-run shot from Nolan Arenado in the top half of the first, only to see Matthew Libertor struggle, give up a solo blast in the bottom half. The Cardinals then played three more in the second inning, only to see the Mets score three more as well in the bottom half. Back and forth, they went, and then by the time the sixth inning rolled around, we had a 7-7 ball game, and the Cardinals just continuously Blue leads over and over and over. Matthew Libertor was as bad as we've seen since he got called up. Um, Got killed, just absolutely killed with two outs. All of the damage with two outs. I I, I believe it was John Denton that actually from MLB.com, they tweeted that out during the game that all seven of the Mets runs on Sunday came with two outs. Not all of them were off Libertor. They got... uh, um, Stratton. Stratton was the one that gave up some runs too in that one. But all of them with two, all of them with two outs. I don't, I don't know what happens. I don't know what it is about two strike counts and two outs that continues to cause these pitchers to just miss their spots. But my goodness, is it frustrating to watch? The Jeff McNeil hit by pitches that we saw out of out of Libertor as well. It's not like you plunked him in the back or the shoulder or anything. No, they're like look, they graze Jeff McNeil, but they kind of sit by pitches and they led to bad things. And I, and I was talking to some buddies the other day about Jeff McNeil, and I don't know why he was randomly in this conversation because the Cardinals hadn't even played the Mets yet. But I brought up to him, I was like, "Is Jeff McNeil like the the new Hunter Pence of Major League Baseball, where he's just like this goofy looking dude?" He chokes up on the bat a ridiculous amount. Like it looks silly. Like get a get a smaller bat. <laughs> Doesn't it, it just looks ridiculous up there? Nothing about him when you stare at him goes athlete. That that right there, top of the line professional athlete. This guy won a batting title, constantly produces and is in the thick of things. But dude, so annoying to watch him play against you. They, the Mets fans probably love him, but um. Later in the game, no one out, Naranato, outside of the first inning, that home run that he hit in the first, failed in some clutch spots, right? He had a couple of tough at-bats where, you know, you're like, oh, man, you guys got to come through in those situations. But he ends up coming up big later on in the ninth inning when he rips that second dinger of the game off of former Cardinal Adam Atavino. And Hicks comes in and, again, shuts the door. Cardinals escape with an 8-7 to seven win and their, their first series victory since May 21st against the Dodgers. All right. Takeaways from the weekend. Takeaways from the weekend because there's some good stuff here. Um, let's start with Jordan Walker. Jordan Walker, the real deal, right? What we're seeing out of Jordan Walker right now, it's fantastic. Sure, the defense is very suspect in the outfield. I understand that. But again, he just started learning how to play the outfield last year. Uh, he's 21 years old now. Okay. It's going to take a little bit. It's not like he's been playing outfield his whole life. He's going to screw up on rounds. Uh, the, the play, the hit down the line where he dove for it and it got past him, stumbled at first, then tried to make a great play, try to be aggressive, make a great play and save it because odds are that ball is probably going to get past him anyway. And the two runs were going to score, but then he hits the relay guy to get the guy at third base. You know, he does good things after the fact. He's 6'6", so diving for the ball does not bother me so much. So I didn't have an issue there. But the growing pains are going to continue in the outfield. That's just how it's going to be. But you can't deny, <clears throat> excuse me, how good he looks at the plate right now. I'm currently riding an 11-game hitting streak. Over that period, he's hitting 395 with four home runs, eight RBIs, OBP of 477. He's slugging 790. His OPS at 1.267. If I have a complaint about Jordan Walker, nothing to do with defense, please, please learn to slide feet first. Jordan, every time I see him go in head first to a base, my stomach drops a little bit. It just drops for somebody, somebody, anybody. Is there anybody around there that can teach this guy to slide feet first so he can avoid injuries to his hands, fingers, shoulders, his face, his neck, all of the things that you put at risk when you dive head first sure there's risks feet first too as well ankles legs knees whatever but 
the damage that is done when you slide head first, not only you just hammering your chest and your body into the ground when you slide head first is way harder on your body than it is sliding feet first. You got all the meat in your lower half down there. Learn to slide head or uh, feet first, please, Jordan Walker. And Ollie, don't you dare. Don't you dare move him back down in the lineup. Clearly, he's not going to push Contreras down, no matter how much we complain about that and beg him. But you got to keep Walker in the top six at all times from here on out. Don't go anywhere but up with Jordan Walker. Number two takeaway. Love the fight that the Cardinals showed in games two and three. Friday, they looked dead and lifeless. Saturday and Sunday, though, I saw an energy. I saw some spirit. Uh, that I hadn't seen from this team in a while. Winning obviously has a lot to do with it, but you've got to be able to, as Ali said, punch back. You know, when things don't go your way, you can't just roll over. And specifically on Sunday, they, they could have done just that. They could have turtled, as I like to call it, where they just go into their shell and there's nothing more coming from them the rest of the game. The Met, <clears throat> Mets continue to come back over and over and over, but the Cardinals did not quit. They, they didn't quit and they... That shouldn't go unnoticed. You know, they 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 kept fighting and they pulled out victories in both games. And uh shout out to Brendan Donovan. Takeaway number three, another strong series at the plate, writing a seven-game hitting streak now, six for his last 14 uh against the Mets. Great series. He's done a really nice job at the top of the order in Lars Newt Bar's absence. Now, the question was going to be when Lars returns. What are they going to do with Donovan? Was he going to go back down to the bottom half of the order? Uh, was Newt Bar going back to the leadoff spot? Well, we kind of got our answer today. Uh, Newt has been activated from the IL after playing in Memphis the last couple days. In his second rehab game on Sunday, Lars had two home runs. He doubled and uh, had a four-hit day. Four RBIs. He looked really, really good. Looks very healthy. Uh, the team decided to activate him today. They have option Luke and Baker back to Memphis so he can actually play the game of baseball since they weren't going to use him at the major league level. So pretty much the dumbest call up ever. No, it made no sense at all that just bring up Motter again. If that's what you're going to do next time around, just do that. Um, the team now has some momentum though, after the last couple of days in uh, the big apple. And the question is, can they carry it over into their series with the nationals who are one of only four teams in the league who have a worse record than the Cardinals. Now, speaking of today's lineup, new bar, batting third. They're going to keep Donovan at the top spot. And they had Newbar batting third. Walker is going to DH. Carlson's going to the bench. They're going to keep Tommy Edmond in center field at least for today. I, I don't know if this is a permanent thing or not. Um, I really don't. But I know he made it, you know, he probably should have had that triple the other day. But for the most part, Tommy Edmonds looked pretty darn good in center field. I just think it's kind of crazy that we're going to have Donovan in left and Edmund in center, and Carlson's just going to be on the bench now that Newt Bar's back. That's a little weird to me, but it's only one lineup. We'll see how it plays out over the next few days. Um, as if the season couldn't get any weirder, though, former Cardinal David Freeze had fans doing a, a, a double take on the announcement that he made on Saturday. So we're going to talk about that next here on Locked on Cardinals. For a championship team, it's all about making every or making sure every player is a perfect fit on your roster. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will actually fit or you're going to get your money back. You know, nobody wants to deal with hey, I ordered this and now it doesn't fit. So I got to send it back. How about you send me a different one? And the back and forth thing goes, nobody likes that. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors and that's what you need to have with them. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you're going to be back in the game in no time. Nobody likes having to be out of commission because you've got an automobile problem. Get it fixed with eBay Motors. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply.
The Cardinals are on the road against the Nationals, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals Hometown Broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Uh, thank you to my everydayers for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day. We appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate all you guys chiming in on Twitter and on YouTube each and every day. So many comments, and I, I wish I could get through all of them and respond to all of them. You guys are amazing. Like It's been so much fun communicating with you guys on both Twitter and on YouTube. I'm curious what your thoughts are on what former Cardinal David Freeze did on Saturday, because this was very, it was odd when I, when I first heard it, I was like, wait, what just happened? As you know, the Cardinals let the fans vote for a, a member to go into the Cardinals hall of fame each year. And this year you had to vote between pitchers, Steve Carlton, Joaquin Andujar and Matt Morris. You had shortstop Edgar Brenteria and then third baseman David Freeze. Now, all of them are deserving in some way, shape, or form, okay? All of them great representatives of the Cardinals. Personally, I voted for Renteria. I, I, I think he had an extremely underrated time in St. Louis. But I also knew that most fans were probably going to vote for David Freeze because of his heroics in the 2011 postseason. And I understand that. He only played on the team – from 2009 to 2013, but that 2011 postseason, just magical, just magical, you know, uh, named the NLCS MVP, World Series MVP. He had uh, the game tying two out, two run triple in the bottom of the ninth uh, of game six of that World Series against Texas and then goes and hits the walk off dinger two innings later to force the game seven. And that game is what many call and I'm not talking about just Cardinals fans call the greatest World Series game of all time just because of everything that went on in that game. So naturally, the fans voted David Freeze in. But on Saturday, Freeze declined the invitation to join the Cardinals Hall of Fame. His statement reads this way. This is something that I have given an extreme amount of thought to, humbly, even before the voting process began. I am aware of the impact I had helping the team bring great memories to the city I grew up in, including the 11th championship, but this honor means more to me. I look at who I was during my tenure, and that weighs heavily on me. The Cardinals and the entire city have always had my back in every way. I'm forever grateful to be part of such an amazing organization and fan base then, now, and in the future. I'm especially sorry to the fans that took the time to cast your votes. Cardinal Nation is basically the reason why I've unfortunately waited so long for this decision and made it more of a headache for so many people. I feel strongly about my decision and understand how people might feel about this. I get it. I'll wear it. Thank you for always being there for me, and I am excited to be around the Cardinals as we move forward. So my only regret, first, when I heard the news, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, we cannot do anything right this year, can we? We can't even vote in the right guy. He doesn't want to go in. But my regret in this situation is that I, I wish I wish he just hadn't even been on the ballot. If this was something that he was already thinking about, if there was even a chance that he wouldn't want to be elected in, he shouldn't have been on the ballot because you knew he was going to get in. Because Cardinal fans love the guy for what he did that year, as they should. I respect his decision that he isn't as deserving as some other members that came before him. Again, I voted for Renneria. I thought he was a better Cardinal for a longer amount of time than David Freeze was. But this was the fan vote. You know, the fans wanted to show David Freeze their love and appreciation by putting him in a red jacket. So I'm a little bit shocked at this, that he's like, nah, I don't deserve it. We think you deserve it. The Cardinal Nation has spoken. We think you deserve it. So I, I'm just a little surprised by it. But there's no need to get bent out of shape about it, right? You know, why are we going to get upset about this? This is his choice, and he doesn't want to do it, okay? Uh, Cardinals president Bill DeWitt III said in a statement, although we are disappointed that David has declined to be inducted into our Hall of Fame, we respect his decision and look forward to celebrating his great Cardinals career in other ways going forward. He is always welcome at Bush Stadium. Of course he is. David frees his family. He'll remain family. Nobody's going to think less of him for this. Uh, but it's just another layer to a, to a bizarre year in St. Louis. So now there's no fan vote member going in this year. Jose Okendo, the owner's choice for induction, and Max Lanier, the Red Ribbon Committee selection, will both go in for the class of 2023. The Hall of Fame weekend is set to begin on August the 18th. Uh, we're going to do a minor league Monday today on the show. So we're going to check in with some of the top prospects in the organization, including one Mason Wynn, who had a big day on Sunday. We'll talk about it all next on Locked on Cardinals.
The Cardinals are in Washington to face the Nationals, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Uh, with the Cardinals struggling this season, many have wondered what the future of the shortstop position might look like after the trade deadline. Now, if the price is right, will Paul DeYoung and Tommy Edmond be on this team anymore? Will they get moved? You've got Mason Wynn, you know, top prospect waiting in the wings in Memphis, and the Cardinals don't start improving things quicker. Uh, we might see Win up here quicker than we thought. You know, um, on Sunday, he had a season high four hits. This is the fifth time in his career that he's had four more hits in a game. He's he's really picked things up offensively since the beginning of May, uh, hitting 284, three doubles, five home runs, 16 RBIs since the beginning of May. Uh, April was kind of a tough month for him. On the season, though, he's batting 260, seven dongs, uh, 25 RBIs, 13 stolen bases. Nothing wrong with those numbers. Uh, Gordon Graceffo, friend of the show and one of the Cardinals' top pitching prospects, returned to the mound this weekend. Daniel Guerrero writes at SCLToday.com that Graceffo was back for the first time since April 28th. He tossed two scoreless innings, struck out three batters in a relief appearance during Memphis's 5-3 win on Saturday. He threw 30 pitches, 21 of those for strikes, and allowed three hits in the outing. His fastball was touching 97 and average 94.8. Per stat cast. Now, the 2022 Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year, Gordon Graceffo, was sidelined by shoulder inflammation that forced him on the AL. He'd made four starts and allowed 13 runs in 22 innings during his first first month in AAA before the shoulder injury forced him out of action. He wasn't having a great year. And when you have somebody that's been as good as Gordon has been, when something when the, when things aren't going right, you got to okay, something's off here shoulder inflammation. So they gave him plenty of rest and uh, it looks like he bounced back just fine, at least so far in his first appearance on Saturday. So that's good news. It's good news. You know, you want him healthy uh, the rest of the year, because as you know, the Cardinals got a couple of holes to fill in the rotation when this uh, season is over. Another top arm in the system, former first round pick Michael McGreevy secured his fifth win in AAA and delivered his sixth quality start of the year. He threw six innings, allowed two runs, matched a career high in strikeouts with nine on Saturday. Um, I know he's a name that the fans have really kind of, they're, they're really starting to take notice of what Michael McGreevy is doing. In fact, I've had guys like, bring him up. What, what, he's, he can't do worse than what we got in the rotation so far. Well, Probably he could, he could be worse than them. Um, but we are hoping that he'll have an impact if not at the end of this season. Um, you know, if the, if the Cardinals are out of it by the trade deadline, they decide they're going to punt on the season. They're going to trade pieces off. McGreevy could be a guy that comes up, you know, if they end up moving impending free agents like Jack Flaherty and Jordan Montgomery at the trade deadline, perhaps you see a Graceffo or a McGreevy come up to the big club at the end of the year and get some major league experience. It's a possibility. I mean, we're kind of hoping that it doesn't get to that point. We're hoping the Cardinals can can turn things around. They looked better in New York against the Mets the last couple of days. Now they've got the Nationals for three beginning this afternoon. And the Nationals, as I mentioned earlier, not a great team. Not a great team. And then they get the Cubs uh, this weekend in London. You know, so uh, you've got a chance. You're going to play against some teams that haven't been very good this year. And if the Cardinals are going to... Turn things around eventually. This is a week where you, you kind of want to sweep everything because you only got five games this week because of the travel to London. So if you can sweep five, you might be right back in this thing. It's a possibility. Is it wishful thinking? Yes, but we're trying to stay a little more positive. You know, they just won two games. Let's be positive, right? Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast against the Nationals with Sirius XM. On the SXM map, just search Cardinal today. Um, pitching matchup, Jack Flaherty against Josiah Gray, in case you were wondering. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals at a JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.